Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. What is up, guys? Came in. It's an. It was a, like I said. It was an unattended death in a chair. Guy had leaked pretty far during the process. You know, we found a little bit of drugs. What's up, guys? Here, in sunny Florida. We have another bio for you today. So, what the scene is today? We have a gentleman who passed away in his recliner inside the house. The homeowner was a roommate. Uh, didn't realize that anything was wrong really just kind of hadn't heard from in a while some people were still living in the house started to smell something the door was locked so they called you know police department police department broke down the door and found the scene if you want to take a walk with me we'll give it a little tour here all right so you can see the damage the police department did from kicking this door in they couldn't get the door open so they really broke it down uh, if you look right here you can see the marks from them dragging the body out the coroner's office and everything they me dragging it out um, as you can see, it's pretty messy in here, so we'll walk in. The gentleman passed away in this chair here. Head was leaning off to that side, as you can see, indicated by the stains. Kind of leaked here, ran under the bed, ran under all the furniture, and we have spatter on the ceiling, and the walls, everywhere. So this will be a big job, so stay tuned. So right now, we are just indicating um, with uh, our indicator and then also going back on our part A to illuminate where all of the biomatter is. Bubbles up and fizzes so it makes it very clear to see like where the blood was on the floor. So once we know where it was, we can wipe it up and then we're going to treat it three times with our part A solution and scrub it up. strip between the flooring, the LBT, and the tile in the hallway. You can see it leaked underneath it a little bit. Um, we gotta pull the wood floor anyway, so it's gotta come out regardless, but it definitely does have bio on it. As we're going, obviously the gentleman, he passed away in this chair. 
has biohazard on it. We have to remove and cannibalize this chair, remove any biohazard that is in the material before we can dispose of the chair separately, right? So we started initially by cutting all the visible known spots that we indicated. We saw it as you go through, foam is always de uh, deceptive because you'll see it on the fabric and it could be this big and then when it hits the foam, it's this big. And then when you get to the bottom of the foam, it's this big again. And then you get here and it looks like it ended. But when I pulled this up, you could see it bled through. So that's why it's important to indicate and keep going all the way through. You're throwing the chair out anyway, so you might as well cut all the way through it. Because you miss stuff like this and then, you know, then you're not properly exposing biohazard and you're putting other people unnecessarily at risk. But because you don't want to cut more through a chair. Yeah, I think you again. Will you check? So the job changed a little bit, right? So as we're going through, as we start moving things off to clear it, to move the furniture out, to get the biohazard off, we noticed uh, some cocaine and residue, right? So that is a point of concern because we do not know what the cause of death is. It could be a fentanyl overdose. With the amount of, the, the amount of blood that's here, things like certain things just kind of add up, right? So we're gonna treat this as if it was fentanyl. So we're gonna make sure we're super good. Our PPE is even more uh, accelerated to, to a higher level than it would have been if it was just blood and biohazard. So we're, we're making sure we're taped up, we're sealed. We have a Narcan on site. We're making sure we're good and we're gonna treat it as such. So like I was saying earlier, as you get deeper and deeper into a piece of furniture, especially like this one, you notice more and more bio, like I said, the next layer down. So now that I took the springs out and I, I started chopping that wooden frame up, if you look right here, you can see where it ran down this wood, which I couldn't see before, and all here. So now I'm going to have to cut this wood, this piece, and the base out, all in one half which at that point the chair's just broken apart it'll be a little easier to put it separate this non-bio part into a trash bag and this into a bio bag
so the reason I'm doing this is because we have bio that is soaked into this wood. So this part up here, I can clean that, right? That's that finished polished wood. It's got like a coating on it, everything. I can wipe that off, no problem, it didn't soak. This, however, I do. I did already indicated the UNC foams, but so because it's soaked into the bottom of the wood, I have to remove this part, which then in turn, nobody wants, you know, I don't know. Maybe they want the rest of this cabinet without the bottom, if I'm gonna ask, but um, we're removing this, so they can either keep the cabinet or throw it away. What's up guys? So a little point of interest here, if you if you saw earlier there was a big spot of, of blood. A lot of the other spots were the you know the seepage and the leakage of fluid during the decomposition process. Whether that be you know bile, plasma, a little blood mixed in. That spot specifically, right kind of where his head had slumped, was you can see indicative of the stain um, on the chair was was majority right here so whatever the cause of death was there was a good amount of blood that came out because it hit with enough force and dripped with enough force to splatter all right here repeatedly so it's hitting and just kicking this up and you're now having this big splatter mark right here so makes you wonder as you can see there's baby baby maggots little tiny ones of eggs and baby maggots that never got to grow up and the special big little maggots. What's up guys? End of this bio today. We got it done pretty good. Um, came in, it's an, it was a, like I said, it was an unattended death in a chair. Guy had leaked pretty far. Uh, we found it, once we started pulling things out, found it uh, way, ran under his bed, all the way to the farthest baseboard, all the way across the room. We had to pull uh, the LVT, the stick down flooring, and then underneath that was an old layer of stick down flooring that it leaked through as well to get to the subfloor. We, we had to surface treat and get through all of those and then get to the bottom uh, then we sealed it up we fogged we dropped our ozone machine for that smell mitigation um, 
during the process, you know, we found a little bit of drugs. We had to take secondary precautions because we don't know what it is. You know, we know it's cocaine. We don't know if the guy died of an overdose from, uh, from fentanyl or whatever. So we want to take that precaution for, for the safety of the team and, and all the technicians. So we did that. We got it done. Uh, it's another great day. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.